My favorite part about being a digital product designer is getting to do the work inside of my design tool. But my least favorite part of the job is preparing my designs for development handoff. But what if I told you that you could simplify that process or skip it entirely and move directly from your work in Figma to a production ready application without writing a single line of code? Well, you can do just that. And today I'm gonna to show you how by using Anima's new AI features. If you have some developer friends around, you might wanna bring them close because you're about to blow their minds. So I have my design here inside of Figma. It's a dashboard interface that I've been working on and I would love to hand this over to my developers so they can start working on it. When I'm thinking about getting this application functioning, I don't wanna necessarily be working from my design tool anymore. I wanna go straight into my development environment and it's not gonna be super hard for me to do. All I have to do is head over to Anima's web application. I'm here, I have my account and I'm gonna hit that Anima playground button in the bottom left-hand side of our navigation. This is gonna open up the start to our agentic AI interface where we can actually paste our Figma link. This is what's powerful about Anima. It is for designers. It is moving directly from your design tool. It wants to care about your designs, not prompt something into existence from nothing, but instead look at your actual design, pull in that file, and then start working with it directly. This is super easy. I'm gonna come back, grab my dashboard frame, hit that share button, copy the link, and then paste it right inside. We can move from React to just HTML framework, Shad CN, we have some other UI libraries there, TypeScript or JavaScript, Tailwind CS. I like all of those options. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this and start building out my actual application like this. Now you can see what Anima is doing right now. It's importing my design, it's grabbing it from Figma, it's starting to write the code, upload all the actual assets from Figma, and then create an AI-driven chat session where I can then start prompting from my already established design. Again, not prompting from nothing, but prompting from something, and that something is the something that I made. Okay, it's finishing up right now and it has begun our agentic AI chat. It is NPM installing everything, building out the code base, that initial scaffolding for our development environment. And really, really quickly, it's put us into a pretty much functioning web application. You can see everything we have on the left-hand side was the start to that chat. You can see it's creating all that scaffolding, all the architecture for our project. It is running all the installation, running the dev. If we head over here away from preview, over into code, you can see that entire architecture and structure, and it's gone ahead and it's launched in its own terminal a local host for us to actually demo our application on. Now we can click back over to preview and we can see what we got, but we can also always check out our original Figma design so we can compare back and forth. That's pretty nice. Now, again, this is gonna get us 99% of the way there most likely, and we can start prompting the rest of the functionality into existence. We have a couple small little areas that need some fixing. We can do that. But for the most part, this looks really, really good. So let's give this thing some functionality. Uh, I think our search button up here should probably be our first piece of functionality. Right now has some hover interaction, but we wanna have one of those advanced command K categorized kind of search features uh, that you see all over web applications right now. So let's head down to our prompt box. I'm actually gonna turn on my microphone and just tell it what to do. Make the search button in the top right hand corner open up a modal overlay that has advanced search capabilities, comma, user feedback and real time results with categories underneath like recent favorites. So let's go ahead and hit that and it's gonna go to work for us. You can see we're chatting with it, it's telling me certainly, I'm gonna add that modal overlay for you. It's writing the code right now in real time. All right, let's come back with some results. Let's see how it looks. We click on it, we open up our search box and it's showing us recent searches, maybe properties, different wells. These are things that have to do with the interface. It read the interface, it knows what it's looking like. So maybe we could put like the word test in here, great, or the word Jesse in here. Great, let's press that and close it, open it back up and it's still there. So it's tracking and storing all the information, which is pretty cool. Although I would like to be able to open this up using command K, which is a really popular thing to do. Let's go ahead and make that happen right now. Make the search modal open up when the user presses command 
plus K on their keyboard. All right, it's finished its job and let's go ahead and press Command K on our keyboard. Look at that, it works really, really nicely. Just Command K. All right, I like that quite a bit. Good functionality. Putting in a word there and then opening it back up, Command K delete those words, it's storing all of our searches, which is great. And let's go ahead and actually try different device sizes here. I'm gonna stretch this out. Okay, we do get some kind of responsiveness. And if you're wondering where that responsive nature comes from, it's actually important to keep in mind the way that you actually design inside of Figma is going to affect how things come out over in Anima. So if I come back over to Figma, you'll see that I have things set with kind of like fill, auto layout fill, max width, minimum width. It's kicking over so that it's very, very dynamic, very, very responsive. It's doing a pretty decent job here. Let's open it up in the mobile viewer really quickly. Stretch that out. Yeah, you can see the the responsive nature that's kicking in. It's very elastic, very responsive there kicking and wrapping into those smaller kind of sizes. And then we click that again, we get our search, which is really, really nice. Let's just scroll down to the bottom here because we have this section that you should be able to tab back and forth. We get hover, but we don't get any sort of interactivity. And that's what we're really trying to build here is some of that actual interactivity and functionality. So why don't we just grab that estimated Wells interest section? Hopefully that is a clear enough prompt and command. Let's see what it does with it. All right, apparently it's finished, it's wrapped up. It has written all the code for it. Let's just go ahead and close our terminal there, open our preview, and you can see as we scroll down, we have our tabs. If I click on those, it's actually opening and closing the correct dynamic information. So uh, this is really, really cool because now our tags are functioning. Also notice this, we had a tag style here, this active tag style. Let's go look at our Figma file. You can see that we, had that green active tag style. In our design that we uploaded, we didn't have the proposed tag style. This is the gray one. Now the balance on it is maybe a little bit off. That's fine, we could fix that, could prompt it to fix it. But the fact that it read the style that we already had and came up with all the appropriate details as well as accompanying styles for it, as well as this hover over the table is super insane. At this point, I have an entirely functional dashboard that has a full code base, all the scaffolding and architecture needed to extend the project. I've taken care of some basic functionality, search, keyboard commands, making sure that tabs are functional. Now, at this point, I want to push this up to a GitHub repo, and I can do that. As long as I'm connected, I can actually push it to GitHub. It's connected to my account check the repository name, make it private, and go ahead and push. And now that's my deliverable. Full-blown production-ready code with scaffolding, architecture, functionality inside the GitHub repo. I'm my developer's new best friend. There is so much more that you can do with Anima's new AI features, but let me know, are you gonna be using this in your next project? Leave me a comment down below and check the description for a bunch of helpful links. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and no code tools and agentic AI just like this one. So make sure you hit that thumbs up and ring the bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things. We'll see you in the next one.